When it comes to modern Omega, the Seamaster Diver 300 and Speedmaster Professional collections tend to garner the most limelight in general. But there are a number of other gems to discover that might not get as much focus, yet are among some of the most interesting watches the brand produces. Today though, we're going to look at a watch that I think certainly qualifies as kind of fitting this standard with the Omega Aquaterra World Timer. I would say one of the more interesting creations from Omega under $10,000. But let's jump in. Alright guys, now before we jump into this video, if you want to just know more about the Aquaterra collection, because there are many references, many things to consider, uh, we have a whole write-up looking at the Aquaterra, the history, and just its importance within Omega's catalog. If you want even more details, check out the full write-up that we have down below in the description on teddybaldasar.com. The Aquaterra collection, although being relatively newer by Omega collection standards, was launched back officially in 2002. The Aquaterra is positioned within Omega Seamaster collection and in many ways represents a fusion of the Railmaster lineage given its common attributes in resistance to magnetism with the sporty demeanor of the head of the Seamaster family. Since its launch 20 years ago, the AT has expanded to include dozens of variations in terms of size, dial color, bracelet, strap options, case material, and of course, a myriad of movement and complications. The first attempt at utilizing real time functionality with the AT was back in 2017 with the limited edition platinum variation with the stainless steel non-limited variants release in 2019. Stacked up against Omega's lengthy list of industry leading watches, the Aquaterra World Timer has occupied a somewhat quieter role for the brand. But after you see this piece in person or at least see it properly photographed, I think you begin to understand the gem that the AT World Time is. Digging into the overview of the watch itself and starting with the conversation on case and wearing experience, the Aquaterra World Timer comes in with a diameter of 43 millimeters paired with a somewhat restrained 50 millimeter lug to lug for its size and aids this broader set of dimensions in wearing slightly smaller than its proposed diameter. However, another notable element of the wearability equation is the thickness that measures just a shade under 14 millimeters, meaning this is a thicker watch for a typical three-hander and altogether is a watch that I would probably say is best for those with at least a 16 and a quarter centimeter wrist. Often a leader in terms of finishing for the price the AT World Timer offers linear brushing on the case flanks with polishing across the bevel, traveling the length of the case, and terminating at the Omega Signature turn lugs. A polished conical bezel rests on the top of the case with a polished sign screw down crown in its usual three o'clock position. Set between 21 millimeter lugs, this AT is equipped with a three length bracelet utilizing brushed outer links and polished center links, an execution that is probably gonna broadcast its wear given the propensity to show scratches at those center links, but one that also complements the more refined positioning of this complicated member of the Aquaterra family. Tapering to 18 millimeters, the bracelet culminates with a hidden butterfly style push button clasp that operates smoothly while lacking any traditional points of micro adjustment, but does offer screwed in links, including some half links that should offer reasonable sizing. However, the perfect fit might be a concern for some, in which case the rubber strap option that also can accompany this watch can make a lot of sense. And I know a lot of people speak highly of it. I did not get to spend any time with that strap, but I have spent time with other Aquaterra straps and those rubber straps and other pairings with this type of case design really do work well. Looking at the watch's front facing surface, the striking densely featured dial comes into view with the help of a slightly domed sapphire crystal that is treated with anti-reflective coating on both sides, which given the visuals here is a welcome feature. The dial, despite offering a wide array of information, remains legible thanks to the careful combination of color, dimension, and texture in separating the various elements. Starting with the entrancing center, because that's naturally where the eyes will go here, we have a grade five titanium plate that has been laser ablated to create a realistic globe as well as the Seamaster signature at noon. Interestingly, the colors on the globe are achieved by way of a chemical reaction to the laser ablating process itself, as opposed to being painted or enameled in under the macro lens. The vibrance of that color and dimensional detail here 
It's just impressive, especially from what is in essence more of a mass market offering at a sub $10,000 price. Just outside the globe, a 24 hour ring made of hezolite rests just beneath the sunbrush blue primary dial surface and is split to show the day and nighttime hours. Like other world timers, this ring can be rotated via the crown to coordinate the 24 hour locations at the dial's outskirts with half of them being printed on the sloping chapter ring and the other half neatly placed between the applied faceted indices, which are themselves in keeping with the modern Aquaterra style. An AT style handset manages the local time telling duties at center with a date window neatly tucked into the six o'clock position and capable loom is present on the indices and hands, though it does not glow with the most impressive incandescence compared to some of the other offerings from the brand. Now turning this watch over, we have the conventional screw down exhibition case back that combines with the aforementioned screw down crown and achieving this watch's 150 meters of water resistance, a mainstay feature of the Aquaterra collection. Inside though, we have the in-house caliber, the 8938. Like a number of modern Omegas, this caliber is a master chronometer and certified that goes beyond the standards of traditional COSC for a tighter range of accuracy deviation, as well as other strict standards in the area of durability, resistance against magnetism up to 15,000 Gauss, and other tests, all while testing the watch fully cased up rather than just the movement. While machine finished, the 8938 is still well done for its price, featuring an array of spiral waves, some surprisingly unglage on the bridge edges, blued screw heads, and machine engraved text. Looking beyond the finishing, the 8938 is equipped with 39 joules, a silicon balance spring, a free sprung balance, and beats at Omega's standard coaxial frequency of 25,200 vibrations per hour or 3.5 hertz. This coaxial escapement within is a modern and commercialized take on Dr. George Daniels' creation that was adopted by Omega in 1999, that with an alternative pallet fork and escapement wheel design can limit the amount of sliding friction taxing the movement, and in turn help lessen the need for lubrication and maximizing service intervals. In addition, the movement features two barrels that are both visible through the sapphire case back, helping both with achieving the power reserve of 60 hours while ensuring optimal isochronism of the balance by way of releasing a controlled source of energy from two sources rather than just one. The movement also features some more conventional functionality with hand winding and hacking and is upgraded to work in tandem with the rotation of a 24 hour disc at the center. Just to speak to how it will operate and just to set the watch, this follows the same activation as other AT models at the first position that will enable the isolation adjustment of the local hour hand without stopping the balance in the process. However, unlike other world timers, which most often features an ability to rotate the ring of locations representing the time zones, as well as another 24 hour ring with a day night indicator, this caliber only provides the ladder functionality that is also tied to the general minute hand and setting. So in order to actually set the time here, you would pull out the crown to the farthest position in order to align the 24 hour ring with your home time or your reference time that you want to uh, really be able to see. And then you have your minute hand, you wanna have that set appropriately. And then by pushing the crown in, you can adjust your local time by way of that isolated local hour hand. Although this doesn't come with all the bells and whistles of some world time functionality out there from the luxury segment, it could still be one of the best world time functionality offerings under $10,000 here. But now looking at this Aquaterra world timer, just some final thoughts on just what this thing has going for it. Now I kind of wrote this watch off for some time for my own personal collection. And I think it's still going to be the case just because of its size, it is going to be a larger watch. But this is one of those watches that when you get past maybe some of the size elements and also just considering that it's a little bit more eclectic in terms of its approach, it's not gonna be for everybody, that I think you begin to see why this is kind of almost a Omega watch to own under $10,000 for those that really kind of just want to get into something that's unique from the brand. This isn't your main stream Seamaster Diver 300 meter or even a Speedmaster. This is something that's unique and different. And I think one of the better modern watches that I think from an enthusiast perspective, I think has a lot of runway to continue to be successful. It's almost become a watch and standard production from Omega that is like a watch when you're in the know, you know. Because visually speaking, this is just a beautiful looking watch. As you get a closer look of that center plate on this dial, it's spectacular. Under $10,000, it doesn't feel like when you're really focused in on that part of the watch, that's the one element of this piece that doesn't feel anything like it belongs in this price range. They did such a wonderful job of creating that really immersive experience as you focus in at the center of the dial. And I recall actually when interviewing Reynold Eshelman about a few months back, 
I, I looked at his wrist and I saw that he was wearing one of these watches. So chances are, if he, the uh, CEO of Omega, and this watch is not like a brand, brand new release, is choosing to wear this watch, I think that kind of also says something about maybe what this watch is delivering. And for those that are in the know, I think start to recognize that this is a pretty cool piece and it's not your just run of the mill Omega piece that you're getting under $10,000. In fact, I think it's probably one of the more interesting watches that Omega makes. And when you're talking about world time functionality under $10,000, this has to be on a short list of ones to consider. But all right, guys, what are your thoughts on this Omega world timer? Are you a fan of it? Do you not really think it's for you? Do you think it's overly busy and it's just not really something that you would ever look to buy or maybe it's too big? Or do you think it's just beautiful, it's unique, and it's one of the best Omega watches? I feel like you're gonna be on maybe two extremes here rather than something that's just on the fence. This just seems like a watch that either really speaks to someone Someone or doesn't at all. Love to see those comments down below. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also, check out the new pre owned section on teddybaldister.com. Have brand new watches coming in all the time, every single week. And if you're looking to sell your watch, fill out the form on the sell page, and one of my colleagues will be in touch if it's a good fit for our program. But all right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.